Sabrina Pauli will conclude her lecture series. Okay. Hello. Um, yes. Today, um, I already started yesterday, but today I'm talking about tropical and human geometry. And uh, first half, I will uh, go back to Bizu um, and do this in the growth and liquid ring of K. And then the second half, I will show you um, some uh, how to use tropical geometry to do some curve counting, as already introduced yesterday by Candice. And I'll show you some work in progress there. But let's start here uh, with Bizu. Um, let's recall what we did yesterday. So here you can see two tropical curves. I hope you can see that. Uh, one of degree three, one of degree two. So um, they inter should intersect in um, six points counted with multiplicity. And um, so here, this one has weight three. Yes. Um, uh, so let's. Let's do this. Let's look at this. So we call that the intersection multiplicity. Uh, was just the area of the dual parallelogram in the dual subdivision of the union. So these two tropical curves, the union of them is uh, still a tropical curve. So let's say this is gamma 1 and the other one is gamma 2, and this is the dual picture. Um, we have 1, 2, 3 intersection points uh, corresponding to these three parallelograms. And here, the area is 1. Here, the area is 2. And here, the area of this is 3. Um, so this actually makes sense. This gives us a 6. Um, okay, also maybe recall where does, it, uh, where does this come from? Uh, so if gamma i is the tropical vanishing locus of a polynomial which we, to which we can associate a tropical polynomial, so f i is a polynomial with coefficients in the field of Fizeau series, two variables, then we can associate a tropical polynomial. And let's assume um, that gamma uh, i for i equal to 1 and 2 is um, defined by something like this. And this was indeed the number of points. So let's say uh, ci is defined by the vanishing of fi, our algebraic polynomial. Then this area actually is the number of points I always use tilde yesterday in uh, the intersection of C1 and C2, such that tropicalizing this means taking minus the valuation of P tilde is actually P. So now let's do this. Uh, yesterday we did this, we restricted to algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Now let's do this uh, um, in bigger generality. And let's recall. McKean's Bizu the uh, theorem, and let's only write it down for curves. So just like in this setup, let ci be the vanishing of a polynomial fi. Now let's go back to p2. But let's do this over the field of Pisseau series. Let's assume that um, the degree of fi is di of i1 and 2. And uh, we needed this relative orientation condition, which in this case just means that d1 plus d2 um, is uh, odd. So this is relatively orientable. Um, now assume that these two intersect transversely everywhere, then we've seen that if I sum up over the intersection points, 
and I take the trace from the residue field of P down to our base field, which is now the field of P0 series over K. Um, and apply this to the determinant of the Jacobian of F1, F2, um, at P. Maybe I want to call it P tilde now. Let's call it P tilde. Uh, then uh, one gets D1 times D2 over 2 times H. H is a hyperbolic form. So now, um, in order to reprove this using topical um, uh, geometry, just like we did yesterday, I need to uh, need a new intersection multiplicity. I need to have more information here. So, uh, and I kind of want to use this as a definition for the intersection multiplicity for all the points that tropicalize to a given intersection point. So uh, that, that, let's use this setup and let's say gamma i is the tropical vanishing locus of the associated tropical polynomial. Then let's define the A1 uh, intersection multiplicity. So P is an intersection point of gamma 1 and gamma 2. Um, let's define this to be, we take the sum over all uh, the P tilde in the intersection such that minus the valuation of P tilde is P. And we just copy this formula. Okay, so now uh, we want to identify this with something we can see here. But this won't be possible. The problem is that when we, when we tropicalize, so that means I just take minus the valuation of everything. Or also I can also do this with the polynomials, and I also only remember minus the valuation of the coefficients, that really we, use too much, uh, we lose too much information. So we need to remember a little bit more about these polynomials. And the following exercise tells you exactly what you need to remember. And this will be an exercise today on the exercise sheet. Namely, the growth and degrid ring of the field of Pissot series over K is isomorphic to the growth and degrid ring of K. Um, and this isomorphism, I cannot even tell you what it does on the generators. Um, it takes an element in the Pissot series. So here, so we, we have A0, T to the Q0, plus higher order terms in T. And the only thing it remembers is the A0. And A0 here shouldn't be 0. And sticks it into brackets. So this indicates that we need to remember the initial coefficients, these A zeros of the coefficients of the F1 and F2. And that's what the following definition does. So definition, so we call it an enriched tropical curve. Um, what is this? This is a tropical curve uh, together with coefficients, call it coefficients. Um, and I can take these coefficients, uh, let's call it A, in units of K. Um, 
what units of k squared. By this I mean uh, I define an equivalence relation on the set of units of k and I, I, tend, I, I say two things are, two elements are equivalent if they differ by a square. Recall maybe that in the growth and liquid ring we had the relation that a is equal to a b squared. So we could also just take these as the generators. Um, and uh, uh, we need one coefficient for each uh, component of R2 minus the tropical curve gamma, so call it gamma, or equivalently um, one coefficient for each uh, vertex in the dual subdivision of gamma because the, the components of R2 minus the curve correspond to um, uh, the vertices in the dual subdivision. For example, if I have a tropical conic like this, um, if I draw the dual picture, it looks like this. Then I want to um, uh, uh, assign a coefficient to each of these vertices. So let me call this A00 because this is the lattice point 00, this A10, and this uh, A20, A11, A02, A01. And I can also write them equivalently. I could write them in here. And uh, as I already said, if I have f a polynomial over the field of Pissou series, so I, I, I use these here, z1 to the i, z2 to the j, then I uh, was able to associate a tropical polynomial to it, um, which was just the tropical sum of minus the valuation of a i j tilde um, x to the i y to the j. And this gave rise to a tropical, um, a, a tropical curve. But now, if I draw this tropical curve, I also want to want to remember these coefficients, but only the initial coefficients. So if I write this as a i j t to the minus no, plus valuation of A, I, J, and higher order terms, I would assign this A, I, J exactly to the A, I, J as I wrote it here. Um, yes. So now, uh, let me very quickly tell you, here we are looking at unions of two tropical curves. So I need to tell you how these coefficients behave if I take the, the union. Um, so if I have this one, let's call it coefficients here a 0 0 a 1 0 a 0 1 and I uh, maybe I'll take a different color maybe yellow is good uh, let's call this b 0 0 b 1 0 c 0 2 uh, b 0 1 so this is like the simplest thing I could I could draw two tropical lines but it illustrates what happens so now I look at the union of these let's say this is the union of these two, and now I want to assign coefficients. And I just take the product of the coefficients and the corresponding components. So here, down here, I have to take the product of A00 and B00. It's a bit small. Then uh, in here, um, I move to A10, but I'm still in the B00 component. 
here I just have the A10, B10 component, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now uh, here's the definition, and um, now I'll tell you like the theorem how to identify this with something you can read off just you can read off the tropical curves once you decorated it with coefficients. And the proof of the theorem I can already tell you is really you do a very, very long computation of all these traces. And in the, in the lecture notes, I put the easiest case for the following theorem, um, where I compute the formula for, for this case, just the intersection of two lines. Um, but yeah, in general, it's a very, very long computation. So in order to state the theorem, I need to uh, uh, do the following. Let me get colors again. So, if you have, just let's look at a local picture. Let's say we have two tropical curves. I want to call this gamma 2 and this gamma 1, and they intersect. So, these should be bigger, but uh, let's just look at the local picture. Then dually to this, I just draw parallel lines, uh, orthogonal lines, sorry, like this, and we get something. Oops. We get the parallelogram like this. So this is delta p. Now, um, Let's assume we have a vertex of this parallelogram. Let's call it V for vertex. Then let's first of all let alpha V be the coefficient of V. That would be the product of two coefficients, like one from, from gamma one and one from gamma two. And I also need to tell you a sign. It's like a sign in which order these two curves intersect, namely, this uh, sign depends on p and v, and then I want this to either be plus one or minus one, uh, and plus one if first gamma one, then gamma two, and here first gamma two, then gamma one, if uh, we walk inside delta P, so inside here, around V, and let's do this anti-clockwise. So let's do this in an example. So I want to go anti-clockwise, so that's this way. I walk around V inside here. Then first, by first gamma 1, I mean, uh, or gamma 2, I mean the edge dual to something from gamma 1 or gamma 2. So in this case, we start with the yellow one, so it's first gamma 2 and then gamma 1, so here in this example, epsilon p of v is minus 1, but for example here would be plus 1. Then in every definition, um, call v a lattice point odd if both entries are odd. And now I can state the theorem. This is joined with Andres Ramio Fuentes. Um, and it says that this A1 intersection multiplicity. Uh, this one here, let's, um, this one here can be identified with the following rule. Do you sum up over 
v all the odd um, vertices of the dual parallelogram. So I only care about these if these are odd. And what do you sum up? You just take the sine uh, epsilon p of v times the coefficient. And then uh, you need something of the correct rank. You know the rank should be the area of the dual parallelogram. So you add a couple of hyperbolic points. So here I'm just subtracting the number of odd vertices because these contribute to the rank one form here, or the class of the rank one form here, and we have this. So this is in the Grofen de Quid ring. I mean, actually, it's in here, but we've seen that this is isomorphic to the Grofen de Quid ring of K. And as I said, you. Let's assume that they intersect topically transversely. Um, then also in particular, this doesn't vanish. And as I said, what you do is you really compute and then identify this with this nice, nice formula. Okay. So I guess it's time to do this in this example. First of all, um, this is uh, so. This is uh, gamma one has degree three, gamma two has degree two. So this is uh, delta two plus three. So this is a delta five. Um, so uh, here, this one is uh, an odd point. This is one one. So let's say the coefficient here is alpha one one. Here's another odd point at this point. So let's call this alpha 3, 1. And the last one is uh, 1, 3. So let's call this alpha 1, 3. And now um, let's compute these intersection multiplicities. Um, right. So let's say, let's see, let this be P1, then this is delta P1, then the multiplicity at P1 is, here we have a, a, a um, parallelogram of area one. It has one odd vertex, namely uh, alpha 1, 3. So we have alpha 1, 3, but I also need to compute um, uh, the sign. So we walk around this point here anticlockwise. So we start here at the blue, which is gamma one. So we have a plus sign. The multiplicity uh, at P2, let's call this here P2. This corresponds to this parallelogram is we have something of rank two because this has area two. We have this odd point. Um, so now let's walk anticlockwise around this point. So we start here, which is dual to something from gamma two, and we end here. So this has a minus sign. And uh, now here, um, we walk anticlockwise. So we start at the red, and we go to the blue. So it's again a minus sign, minus alpha. One. And the last one, let's call this guy P3. I feel like I, ah, I screwed this up a little bit in the picture, but it doesn't make a difference. It should look like this. Uh, So what is this here? So we have one um, vertex, which is uh, odd. And um, so we walk around 
it anticlockwise, so we start at blue and we go to red, so this is a plus sign. That's V1. Um, there's, this one doesn't count because it's in the interior. This has area of three, so we have to add a hyperbolic form. So now, if I sum up all these intersection multiplicities, what do I get? I get at least one hyperbolic form here, but I get two more because alpha 1, 3 plus minus alpha 1, 3, you did this in the exercises, gives me a hyperbolic form. Exactly like here, alpha 3, 1 plus minus alpha 3, 1 gives me a hyperbolic form. So this agrees with d1 times d2 over 2 times h. And this is no coincidence. Um, because with this rule now, we can easily reprove Rizou's theorem. So, corollary if d1 plus d2 is odd. Remember, this was, this was the relative orientation condition, relative orientable condition. Um, and uh, the Newton polygon of gamma 1 is uh, delta d1. And the Newton polygon of gamma 2 is delta d2. Then. If I uh, sum up over all the intersection multiplicities, um, let's assume gamma 1 and gamma 2 intersect tropically, transversely. Um, gamma 1, gamma 2, I get uh, D1 times D2 over 2 times H. So let me give you the proof of this. If D1 plus D2 is odd, there are no odd points on the boundary of uh, delta D1 plus D2. For example, here, uh, d1 plus d2 was odd, and all these odd yellow points were in the interior. There's nothing on the boundary. So this is something we need. So the relative orientation, um, orientability condition is reflected in the combinatorics. Then, if you count um, the number of intersection points um, such that V is the vertex um, of delta P. So let V be an odd point in the interior of delta, sorry, this is a bit small, D1 plus D2. If you count the number of uh, uh, intersection points such that V is the vertex of the of uh, delta P. I claim that this is even. And the reason for this is just if you have such an intersection point and you start somewhere, you walk, do a full turn, go around once, then whenever the color changes, uh, you, you go from one um, curve to, the, uh, to, to, to another. So you start at like an edge dual to an edge in uh, gamma 2. And then here the, the, um, the color changes. Um, uh, so you go to uh, gamma 1. Uh, and this means that we actually have an intersection. Then the color stays the same. Um, so there's no intersection. Then we have another intersection, and the color changes again. And in the end, you have to end up at the same color. Also, um, the number of p now we know this is an even number, so now if we only take the ones such that the sign 
um, this plus one, this is the same as uh, when the sign is minus one. And this is the same argument. You just look at, you know, this color change corresponds to an intersection. And now the order of color change, so if I start with red and then you go to blue, um, this is uh, the sign minus one. And if you start with blue and you go to red, then this is the sign plus one. So now we know that, let's compute in bit, because I don't want to think about uh, hyperbolic forms. And then if I sum up p and gamma one, gamma two, um, I get that um, I sum up over all the odd lattice points and I just take the number of uh, um, delta p's, such that v is the vertex, divided by two times, what do I get? The coefficient of, of v plus minus the coefficient of v. And you know this is hyperbolic, so in bit, this is just zero. And this actually gives us exactly this, because we know we're going to get a, uh, a form of, of rank d1 times d2. H has uh, rank two. So if we show that in bit we get zero, we're done. Okay. So a uh, couple of remarks. Um, yeah, as I already said, you really need this relative orientation condition because if uh, one of these yellow points were on the boundary, you couldn't do a full turn around it and the argument doesn't work anymore. Um, maybe. We just say that this reproves Bizu for curves. Uh, new proof for Bizu um, McKean's theorem for Bizu for curves over the field of Pizzo series by just the choice of intersection multiplicity. And even since we have uh, this nice isomorphism between uh, the growth and the gwittering of K and the growth and the gwittering of the uh, field of Pizzo series of, of K and this A1 Euler number behaves very well with um, base change, so if I, I just decorate it with a field of preserve series, then under this isomorphism, this corresponds to this A1 Euler number um, just over K, so we actually get the new proof for uh, proof um, for Bizu for curves now just over K. Yes, um, I want to say one more thing. Uh, this also works for curves and other toric, uh, for the intersection of curves and other toric surfaces in the exercises you'll do uh, P1 times P1. And this also works in, in higher dimensions. So this is really nice. Um, so next I'll show you another way to where, where tropical geometry is really useful. So now I just reproved something. But now, uh, next, I want to show you a nice presentation of, an, uh, or a nice example where you can really use this. But let me first ask if there are any questions. Okay. So um, that's yes. There's a question, but we, we can already set up the computer. Maybe. Uh, yes. Okay, that's, um, yeah, I only said that. 
Um, so yeah, good, good point. So maybe maybe add the characteristic k not equal to two assumption because then an element of GW of k is determined by its rank and image in the width ring of k. So this was just GW of k and you mod out by the ideal generated of the hydro, uh, by the hyperbolic form. So uh, I know the rank. Uh, that's what we did yesterday. That was just uh, the sum of areas, which the, the rank is d1 times d2. I know in the width ring um, we get zero, so it has to be a multiple of the hyperbolic form, and we need something of rank d1 times d2. H has rank two, so that's it. All right, then if there are no more questions, I'll continue. I thought now it's really nice to have actually some, I, I have at some point prepared a lot of pictures, so I thought maybe it's nice to show them to you. Also, it's the very last lecture, and I know maybe yesterday some of you were out very long, um, <laughs> including me. So um, let's apply this to, to another problem in the numerous geometry where this is really, really powerful. Namely, this is something Candace already talked about yesterday. Um, you want to count the number of degree d rational plane curves through 3d minus 1 points in P2. And today, let's just assume that all the configurations of points are in general position. I don't always want to write it because it takes up too much space. And this also holds later um, for, the, uh, for the tropical curves. And this will be tropical general position, which is even more restrictive. So in some sense, at least. So today, all the point confi configurations are in general position. And uh, Candice told us yesterday that this number is finite. Here are some examples. If you have a degree one, um, if you want to count degree one curves, so lines um, in the plane through two points, you know from primary school that there is only one. The second one we did in the exercises on Tuesday, um, if you want to count the number of conics through five points in the plane, there is exactly one. And then also Candice yesterday uh, mentioned that if you want to count degree three rational plane curves, um, then there are 12. So remember this number is one, one, 12 because we want to do this uh, tropically later and then it's good to remember it. Okay. So on Tuesday when I introduced uh, a numerative geometry over different fields, I started also with something algebraically close. So let's like tweet, uh, say this is the algebraically close case and then I went on to the the real numbers, so let's also do this here. Oh yeah, oh here I have no, some more numbers here. This goes quite quite quickly. So now let's go to the to the real numbers. Um, so assume now you have a configuration of n1 real points and n2 pairs of complex conjugate points in P2, such that n1 plus 2 n2 is again this number 3d minus 1. So now you could ask the question how many real curves um, pass through them. So Again, when d is equal to 1, this is 1. When d is equal to 2, the argument you did on Tuesday also works to figure out that, to show that this is the, the only curve is, is, is the actually defined over the real numbers. But um, when d is equal to 3, and now I set n2 equal to 0, so there is no complex conjugate uh, points in there, then these, the number of real curves could be 8, 10, or 12, depending on the chosen configuration of points. But we also saw on Tuesday that um, with the, by uh, counting um, things with the local degree, which was one or minus one, um, so when we were doing a sign count, um, then we would get an, a number which is not, which doesn't depend on the, 
uh, on, on the setup, so here on the point configuration. And this also works here. And here, maybe notice that uh, here in the last case, we have one node, the curves is not smooth anymore, and in higher degrees, we will have even more nodes. And it turns out that the sign we want to count the real curves with depends on the types of nodes. And over the real uh, numbers, we have two, two kinds of um, nodes. Uh, the node could either be, be split, so we have two branches, which you see over the real numbers. And locally, you could write this as the equation x squared minus y squared is equal to zero. Or it could be non-split. So you only have one real point here in the middle uh, and two complex conjugate branches. And you could write this as x squared plus y squared is equal to zero. Uh, now call, uh, say, the type of a node is one or minus one, depending on whether the one in case it's a split node and minus one in case it's a non-split node. And let's go back to the picture I just had, the count of real rational plane degree three curves through eight real points, so no complex conjugate ones. Then the number of curves with a node of type one minus the number of curves with a node of type minus one is always eight. It doesn't depend on the chosen point configuration. So in case there were 12 field curves, then 10 would have a split node and two would have a non-split node. So also remember the number eight, it will also pop up later when we do this tropically. And how does this work in general? This is, uh, uh, was done by Beauchanger, namely if you um, count the curves with the following sign. So you take, uh, for, for a real curve, you take the product over the, all the real nodes and you just take the product over the types of nodes. So this would be ones or minus ones. And then if you count the real curves through a configuration of 3D minus one, or, or of N1 real points and two, uh, N2 pairs of complex conjugate points, sorry I didn't write it here, then this is independent of the choice of point configuration. Yes, so how can one um, generalize this? So now let's uh, take K to be a field which is perfect and characteristic not equal to two. Actually, this, this definition would also work in more generality, but later the theorem is, is for this. So let's assume this. And let's again look at the nodes. Um, if the node is split, like here in the first picture, then I can write the equation as x squared minus alpha y squared, where alpha is a, uh, is a square. And uh, if it's uh, non-split, then I can write it as x squared minus alpha y squared, where alpha is not a square. So there could be, um, so now I call the, the type of a node um, to be this, this alpha in this set, uh, units of k mod units of k squared. So there could be more than one type. So there could be more than one type of non-split nodes. There's uh, only one type of split nodes, but there could be more than one type of non-split nodes. And this really generalizes what we had before because the set units of k mod units of k squared, if k is the, uh, the real numbers, then this only has two elements and you could identify it with one and minus one. And this definition really agrees with what we had before. So in the first case, we would have a plus one. And in the second case here, we would have a minus one for alpha. So now um, let uh, C be a plane algebraic curve defined over K. Then we want to um, generalize this, this version G sign, which I just introduced, which was the product of the types of the real nodes. And now what we do is we take the product over all the nodes, not only the ones defined over K. And instead of just taking the product of the type of the node, we have to take the field norm from the residue field of Z down to K. Um, and, and stick it into two brackets, and then we get something in the growth and decvittering of K. So let's look at some examples. If uh, K is the complex numbers, then, well, there's no algebraic um, field extension of, of K, so we don't have to take any norms. And the type of Z, everything will split, so the type of Z will always be one, so it's always just one. And here, this example uh, is supposed to show you that this really uh, generalizes the, the real definition from before. So um, if, if uh, k is the real numbers, then we could either have the nodes defined over r or c. So if the nodes are defined over r, we already, I already told you that the type is just the same as before. And if it's defined over c, well, then the type is, is just what, uh, 
it's just one, and if I take the norm, really nothing changes. So this is this really agrees. So now, the idea would be like earlier, if I do the sign count um, with these spatial and G signs, then I get something uh, independent of the uh, choice of point configuration. So hopefully this is still the case now, and it is. This is a theorem by. Uh, Jesse Kast, Mark Levine, Jake Solomon, and Kirsten Wickergren, and here's the setup. So now we take a list of finite separable field extensions of K, such that the sum of the, the degrees of the field extension is 3D minus 1. That was the number at the beginning. That's uh, the number of, uh, of uh, points in the point configuration. Um, so now um, I just want a point configuration uh, consisting of S points with residue fields L1 to LS. And in, in this case, this actually works. So if I take this weighted count where I weight with, with this thing here of rational plane curves of degree D through such a point configuration, then this is independent of the point configuration. So here I have this, um, this weight, this spatial J weight um, I just defined, which depended on the node. Here, kappa of C, by this I really mean the field of definition of C, not the, the field of fractions. Um, so I sum up over all, all the curves now, not only in the real case, we only summed up over the real ones, but you sum up over all of them, and then we trace down to get something in the growth and decvectoring of K. Okay, are there any questions until now? Otherwise, I'll continue uh, to show you how to actually compute these things. So, um, again, this can be done um, with tropical geometry. Oops. Uh, so let's, let's do the same thing we did before. Let's start to count the tropical curves of a certain degree to get the correct number of points. So let's start uh, with tropical lines. So these are tropical lines, and I claim that there's exactly one tropical line of the so, uh, um, a tropical curve of degree one through two given points in the in the pl uh, in the plane. So now R two. And here I also s assume that the the points are in now in tropical general position. For example, I wouldn't allow to the points to be like on the x-axis, like something like this, because then I could find infinitely many lines for them. So I could also move it like this. So this is not allowed, but in case they are in tropical general position, then I can always find exactly one line here, as illustrated here, these two cases. Let's do this for uh, degree two curves, and we wanted to count them uh, um, uh, through uh, five points. And again, one can show that uh, there is exactly one tropical conic or a tropical plane degree two curve through five given points. There will be an exercise about this in the exercise sheet uh, today. So now let's move on to the degree three curve. So here I really want to do, um, now I really need to also say rational. Maybe I should have said that before. Uh, we also want to say rational um, tropical curves. So we had a definition of uh, smooth curves and computed the genus on the exercise sheet. Um, and the genus was really the number, uh, what was the first Betty number of the, of the graph in the, in, the, in the smooth case, but these are all, uh, these are not smooth. So in general, one can say if, um, the genus is really the, the first Betty number of the graph. So the first one here has genus zero, but all the other ones don't have. Um, so you have to subtract the, these four valent vertices. So here's a four valent vertex. So here we have one loop, but there's also one uh, for valent vertex, so this has um, genus zero and the others have two. So these are the rational tropical curves. And these are actually all the tropical rational plane curves of degree three to um, eight points, so this is always the same point configuration and this figure is by, by uh, Andres. And, uh, okay, yeah, I wanna, because I know there's like some programming people here, I wanted to show you very quickly how to figure out that these are all, so we have nine of them, which is not 12, but we'll get the 12. Um, so here's very quickly how to find all of them. Um, so 
if our point configuration is just like here, so it starts on, uh, um, on the left upper uh, 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 here, and it goes down here, so this is called vertically stretched, then uh, all the tropical plane um, tropical rational curves through it correspond to something called floor diagrams, which you can see here. Yes. So floor diagrams consist of floors. So you have one, two, three floors. These are the floors. And elevators between them. These are the elevators. And I can tell you how to get from the left to the right. So a floor is really this here. This is the floor. This is the upper floor. This thing here is the next floor. And this here is the third floor. And the elevators tells you how the floors are connected. So this is the elevator here. This is the elevator here. This one actually goes all the way down. So this is the elevator here. And these are the two elevators here. And these floor diagrams follow a couple of rules, which I listed here. So the number of elevators to the ground floor is always d, which is the degree. And they all have weight 1. So the elevators could have higher weight. And the number of floors is also d. So in this case, we also have one, two, three floor floors. So this works. There are no closed paths. This uh, is because we have something rational. So I don't have any, any loops here. Uh, I could, like, for example, oh, sorry. If, if there was an elevator, another elevator here, this wouldn't be allowed. And the number of elevators going down minus the number of elevators going up at each floor is always one. So here, there's two going down, one going up. So the difference is one. Same here, two going down. One going up, difference is one. And also here, one going down, zero going up. And then we also have to distribute uh, markings. So as here, so there's exactly one marking on each floor and at each elevator, and these are ordered. And then one just can, count, uh, can just count all these marked floor diagrams, and these will exactly correspond to the tropical curves we're looking for. And this is something you can actually tell the computer very easily. So here's a... Here you can see the, the floor diagrams corresponding to the uh, rational degree three plane curves through the, this given point configuration. So now, okay. Now, uh, how does this relate to to the the problem I stated in the beginning? Um, McCulkin's tropical correspondence theorem tells us that instead of counting algebraic plane curves, we can count um, tropical uh, playing curves, and we'll get the same uh, answer. And here's how, how he counts them. We call that if we have an n-valent vertex of, of a tropical curve gamma, then this corresponds to an n-gon in the dual subdivision because we just draw orthogonal edges. So here, there's three tropical curves and their dual subdivisions. So for example, here we have a four-valent verte vertex that corresponds to this quadrilateral and everything else. Everywhere else we have three valent vertices, so we only have triangles here. And um, McCulkin says one needs to count tropical curves with the following multiplicity. So um, let uh, this mu c gamma be the product over all the three valent vertices. So we ignore this, this quadrilateral here. Um, uh, and what, what are the factors we just take two times the area of the dual um, triangle. So I was planning to write it down here. So, uh, one, two, three, maybe. So the, the first one here, um, we ignore the quadrilateral. We only have triangles of area half. So tri two times the area is one. So the product of one is just one. So here this is mu c. Second one, we have two bigger triangles, which have area two, or double area two. So two times two is four. And the last one here has uh, one bigger triangle. The other one's all small. Um, and this has area half, so two times the area is three. And then uh, McCulkin's correspondence theorem, which was really a big breakthrough in this tropical numerative geometry, uh, says that the number nd we wanted to compute in the beginning is nd trop, which is the sum over all um, the tropical rational plane curves through 3d minus 1 uh, points in R2, in general tropical position, counted with um, this complex multiplicity. So, and I've already showed you how to find all of them with floor diagrams, so now we can go back to this, uh, to the case d is equal to 3, 
and we actually see the first one has multiplicity four because we have this weight two edge and all the other ones have multiplicity one. So we actually get the 12 back. And there's also a real tropical correspondence theorem by McCulkin. So um, here's what the real multiplicities are. So now, uh, again, we only care about the, the, the three valent vertices. And we actually have two cases. So in case that we have an even uh, weight, just like here in the middle, we have this weight um, two, then the real multiplicity is just zero. And in case um, all the weights are odd, like in the first and the third, then what we do is we again take the product over all the three valent vertices. And then we take minus one to the number of interior lattice points. So this is interior lattice points of the dual triangle. So here, all the triangles are small and there's no interior lattice points. Um, so this is just minus one to the zero, this is one. While here, I, I picked one with one bigger triangle where we actually have one interior um, lattice point. So here, we get the minus one. So, and now, again, uh, this uh, real tropical correspondence theorem by McCulkin tells me that if I count, if I want to count um, real curves with a sign through uh, 3D minus one real count uh, points, so here we don't have any complex conjugate points, so here we have a zero for the N2, then this can be computed tropically as the sum, uh, as this weighted sum over all the tropical rational plane curves through 3D minus one points in R2. So in particular, we sum up over the exact same tropical curves here. So in the example, this looks like this. The first one now has multiplicity, real multiplicity zero because there is this even weight and all the one other ones have multiplicity one. So we get the eight back and I told you to remember the eight. So we got the 12 back and the eight. Now let's see what we do, what, what we can do when we uh, count um, over an arbitrary field. So um, here's an A1 version of this. Uh, here's an A1 multiplicity. So um, let's uh, say if the complex multiplicity is even, we just take the complex multiplicity divided by two times the hyperbolic form. And if it's odd, we take the complex multiplicity minus one divided by two times the hyperbolic form plus the real multiplicity and stick it into brackets. And this actually makes sense because the real multiplicity uh, was either zero, one, or minus one, and it was exactly zero when this, the complex multiplicity is even. We can show that this is exactly the case in this case. So this is all well-defined. So I can also put mu a1 here. Here we just get one. Here we get two h. And here we get h plus minus one for, for this example, for these three examples when you compute the a1 multiplicity. And then you also need the correspondence theorem, uh, which uh, I proved together with uh, uh, Andres last year. And it says that if our point configuration consists only of k points, then um, uh, this uh, nd sigma a1 is the same as nd sigma a1 trop, where I sum up over the a1 multiplicities again over the exact same curves as before. So we can also do this for example. So the first one is a two times h and all the other ones will give you a one in brackets and in the end we get eight plus two times h. And uh, for the very last few minutes, uh, I wanna also tell you something about um, can one do this if we, for example, count real curves through not only real points, but also complex conjugate points and, or more generally, um, over K when sigma, this list of uh, finite separable field extensions is not just, just K. The answer is yes, but it's much more complicated. And there's a theorem by Schusten who expresses this version G number, this uh, WD and two, so where we are counting um, real curves through n1 real and uh, n2 pairs of complex conjugate points. Um, and he uh, relates this to a tropical count. 
where he also defines some real uh, multiplicity, but I won't tell you what it is because it's complicated. And now uh, what one has to do is one also has to count, or one has to consider different tropical curves. So these tropical curves now don't look so nice anymore. And they go through N1, what I call fin points, and N2 fat points here. Um, and what, what is this? A fat point is really something that comes from, some, uh, from a pair of complex conjugate points. If I have a pair of complex conjugate points, uh, or let's say um, we take uh, the P0 series over it, if I take the valuation of it, uh, if, and these are complex conjugated, they will have the same valuation, so they will tropicalize to the same point. So I need fat points here. Um, and uh, now uh, we figured out how to, to do the same over k when um, sigma, this list of field extension, only consists of quadratic field extensions and, uh, and um, yeah, trivial field extensions. Then we can also compute this n a1 d sigma with uh, uh, tropically, where we also consider these tropical rational praying curves, which look really ugly and uh, go through fin and fat points. So here's work in progress. Um, our approach here also should work for more general sigma, but uh, I have an example for you to show you how hard this actually is and uh, why we haven't done this yet. So this I drew yesterday evening. Um, so if we start with like a nice curve here, going through only with fin points, what do you want to do uh, to, to figure out what you have to consider? And when you have fat points, you just move two points together. So let's say we move these two together to this one. So this should come from something defined over k a joint square root beta 5. That's why I labeled it with the beta 5. Let's move these two together um, then to, to this fat one. So what will happen is that this, oh, this part will overlap with uh, this part then. So I get like a fat part here. So I also our tropic curves have now fat parts and thin parts. So next I move together this with, no, th this I already moved, this with this one here. And then I get the fat point here on the vertex, which also wasn't allowed before. The same with these two points. And I also move together these two points. So there's another fat part. So um, the combinatorics of these curves get much more complicated. If there's a fat part, it's different. It behaves different than the fin parts, uh, and so on and so forth. Here we have some really ugly four-valent vertex. And you have to really consider all of these new combinatorics. And the plan is um, just for any correspondence theorem, you take a tropical curve and figure out how many algebraic curves tropicalize to it, and just count them. And that gives you the tropical correspondence theorem, which is just a very long computation. Okay, so I think my time is up, so let me finish with this drawing here.